Hey, hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at some Stargate Timekeeper's raw gameplay footage just sent over via the dev team, so thanks to them for sending it over. Recently having an event where they were showcasing a lot more about Stargate Timekeepers, and I'm happy to see a franchise such as this getting a little old game because I feel like there's tons of franchises of TV and movies out there that certainly de really deserve a lot more games, and uh, this one in the style of, like, Commandos and Desperados. What Let's watch. Options? After this turn, the path divides. The way to the right leads to the river. There is a bridge we can raise to cross it. It is strong enough to bear the weight. After the bridge, we can continue on a path that leads towards the camp. Otherwise, we can turn left. We shall come to a great tree with a hidden passage in its trunk. The hell is this Kashyyyk? To let the convoy through. <laughs> it takes two people on top of the tree to open the way. We must first pass through a clearing, then climb up. At that point, the path divides again. We can go whichever way seems safest. Either of them will take us to our destination. So, we have options. Let's scout the area and work out the best course of action. Wherever we go, our first priority is to secure the track. We can't let Mullock's warriors endanger the convoy. That is true. All right, let's go. Let's have go Mullock's indeed. Warriors been here before? Not that I know of. And I have lived here almost my whole life. That's what I thought. Well, your camps are well hidden, far from the gate, and surrounded by woods. If they're not searching for you, they might not find you. I hope you are right. Oh, good chatter between the characters there. So, anyway, this is a game that's uh, similar to Desperados or Commandos, where it's like a real-time stealth strategy game, where oftentimes you're going to be hiding from the enemy and coming up behind them and knocking them out or taking them out somehow. There's been a lot of great games like this recently. Uh, and, of course, you know, this is not the first of its kind, and there's been a few other games, mostly around World War II, that we've showcased on the channel, where the characters get uh, different types of abilities, or, you know, like, the big strong guy can knock people out, or, you know, uh, run with a body, or something like that, or there's the more nimble character that doesn't really have a lot of HP, but can hide in a bush very easily and take out multiple enemies silently, that type of thing, or a blink ability, where they can come up behind somebody very quickly, that type of thing. So this is going to have a lot of those... Um, types of uh, caveats, you know, those types of uh, abilities. And uh, yeah, there's uh, been uh, w one about pirates recently and a multiple uh, World War II ones that are more or less realistic. I think they were uh, warmongers or war mongrels, I think it is. And uh, I, I see some of the things from those games in this one where that's what it takes to be in this type of genre. And, and I've seen games that are hybrids like this. For example, the Lamplighters League that allows you to move around in, in real time, but once the combat starts, then it's all about going into a turn-based, uh, kind of an open plane where you're on top of a giant rooftop. But here, everything seems to be quite narrow and linear, so this must be like an earlier mission to just kind of learn how to take enemies down and really just establishing the story. Although there seemed to be some complexity with the whole opening of the gates or the bridges across with two characters having to climb uh, the... Um, the tree. That's something we always see in these games too, like there's a certain character that can like only climb. Uh, a lot of those are just taking from like the saboteur from uh, Commandos. It, it's so cool to see like developers who more than likely played the Commandos games and are trying to make something around a franchise such as this. Uh, this publisher, Slytherin, is also publishing games for uh, Terminator, which I don't think gets a lot of love. Uh, they recently published a real-time strategy game for Starship Troopers, and also now we get Timekeepers for Stargate, which is pretty damn cool too. Oh, a distraction ability. Yeah. Going into the woods and our bushes there and knocking somebody out. Yeah, a lot of stealth here. A lot of stealth. So we're certainly probably looking at a more earlier mission where it's uh, a little bit of timing is required, but nothing too crazy. Patrols are mostly stationary and just looking around, not really moving or anything like that. So, but yeah, I love to see more franchises getting more attention, and I hope to see more games like, for example, Mad Max get some more love. I, I don't think we've gotten a Mad Max game since the open world game from like 2015. And uh, that one was pretty good, from what I recall. Played it uh, a few years ago on the channel and enjoyed that, too. So uh, the Timekeepers for Stargate, you know, this being a kind of a real-time stealth strategy game uh, or tactical strategy game, 
it's very promising for wanting to see more. I want I want an open world MacGyver RTS simulator city builder. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Honestly, look in 2023, all formulas seem to appeal to somebody. So it's kind of cool to see at least everybody getting something. I'm sure there's some big fans of uh, Stargate out there, and e even for example. Um, Star Trek getting a lot of attention too. Star Wars, I think, of course, gets the better and bigger games, but uh, I think it was uh, Star Trek Resurgence recently got uh, that kind of a telltale style game where it's mostly about dialogue trees and character relationships, but um, I'm really actually happy to see these types of games being made where uh, it doesn't have to be a big AAA experience, and it's just kind of something for everybody that likely can be expanded upon if it succeeds. You know, if this is just a game that does well, and a lot of people like it, uh, maybe we'll get a sequel. If it does very, very well, maybe we'll get lots of DLCs and free updates. And if it, you know, kind of just does okay or mediocre or not so good, um, at least we'll get a Stargate game. You know, I'm not so familiar with the series, and the reason I bring up MacGyver, for example, is because Richard Dean Anderson is a character from Stargate. And there's Stargate Atlantis, and I, I'm not really sure which one this takes place after. I know they've ex explained that before. There was uh, some sort of a battle, I think, from the first series. Um, that this takes place after directly linked in with the television series, but it's good to see I I'm happy that they're trying to at least integrate that with uh, Something that actually happens on TV and not necessarily uh, Just making up their own story with some characters that didn't really exist uh, although they're of course making their own characters uh, In this broader story, but at least they try to tie it in and I do appreciate that Star Trek for example Resurgence did that with a few characters that are found on I think Deep Space Nine uh, later on but yeah so, wow, a lot of abilities here to knock characters out. This is actually really nice. One of the things that can be frustrating about these types of games with stealth is that it's really tight timing and you're almost like quick loading all the time where it's cheesy. But here it looks like the developers given themselves lots of time to be able to... Uh... Oh, that's a cool thing. That's nice. Hold on. As the developer hovered over that button, it shows what it will do and who it'll affect. So once they click the button, then it'll show what that's, or well, it shows before what it'll do. So if they disable or toy with that equipment, I think we may have seen this mission before, at least a little bit of it, because right. I, I do remember that machine. Area. Nicely Let's done. Wow, Kashyyyk is looking beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> now, I think I've seen some other maps for one of the first missions, I think, is some sort of a, like a ship crash, I think, in Alaska or the Arctic. Or something like that where uh, there's a bunch of crash ships and you have to work through the crash site where a lot of these enemies are around too. And there's a little mix of stealth and shooting. Uh, of course, some of the characters do get guns and long range abilities. This, I think I, I kind of really like the stealth here because if you do it right, especially with a little bit of practice, it is very satisfying. Um, more than likely the fifth, sixth, seventh time that you've done this. For example, like a Shadow Gambit, which is another upcoming game where the, all the abilities, if you can kind of figure out how to use them... Um, you know, Desperados being another example, too, where you can trap somebody, uh, knock them down, then, you know, one character's ability knocks them or traps them, then somebody else wallops them, you know, punches them, and, and then somebody else can carry them away. When you know how to maximize all the characters' abilities, it, it almost is if, if you go beyond what the developers intended you to do, and that's pretty cool. Like, you know, uh, getting good at these games and having a flow is really satisfying, especially with some of the Commandos games. I know many of you had commented on um, some of the missions we played previously, explaining like some of the tactics and strategies that you've developed over the years. And uh, interesting to see how people used to play games just by trial and error and quick loading and just doing things a million times wrong in order to get better. Uh, and now it's all about like just almost speed running some of these missions too. You can almost do that once you've got all the timing down, going back and playing them again and again, trying to do a zero detection, uh, zero damage, all items f as quick as possible. It's just self-challenge. Oh, that was a weird ability. Looked like they kind of like got that guy to move away slightly and then knocked him out. And it looks like they handcuffed him too. So maybe there's a potential for that guard to wake up. There's a ton of guards around here. At this point, they've probably almost taken out 20 people, it seems. And there's bushes everywhere. So I can imagine, uh, obviously, the open. horizontal lines. We can cross the river upstream, then raise the bridge from the other side. Okay, let's get over there. The horizontal lines are where the characters will need to crouch in order to remain invisible. So, and we've seen this in many other games too. So it, it's kind of cool that they're very similar in its genre. I do like that. It's a formula that I don't think needs to change or have to have like uh, differences for no reason. It could be different. 
just to be different, but this helps it so that way characters can learn in the same, or people can learn all the characters' abilities in the same genre, uh, rather than just worrying about the uh, game UI or mechanics. So those are easy to learn and easy to master, that type of thing. Okay, so they're knocking out two characters here. Looks like they're going into a active pause mode. So we have, um, you know, a tactical pause where all your moves can be planned out. That's nice, especially when it comes down to... Oh, man, if you had... I, I think you can have up to three characters in this one, or maybe even four. I see, like, a, a red X down there, and I don't know if that means that you can have up to three or four characters. Um, but, yeah, when you're eventually trying to stealth kill four people, timing is going to be of the essence because once somebody... Uh, sees you, they could sound the alarm just visually seeing you. Always frustrating in these games when somebody can actually just kind of look at you and then sound the alarm through their, like, making visual contact with you and then everyone in the map is alerted. It's nice when they have to reach for their radio and you get at least, like, a, a second. If they reach for some sort of a communicator or run towards some sort of an alarm bell, I do like when they give you a little bit of time. It just feels more realistic that way, you know? Um, somebody would obviously have to reach for some sort of a communicator and it's kind of nice to get that extra second before they so pop that here. off. If they continue looking, they will surely find our dwellings and we will have to leave. Hey, we don't know why they're here yet. Or if Moloch knows about Haktal. But if he does, and you need to evacuate, we'll help you. You'll be safe. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tons of warriors here. Another three. Yeah, this could be aimed to be a little bit more of a challenging game. Looks like they're going to be knocking that card over. So wait for that other guard to come back, try to distract all three with some sort of a noisemaker. And then let the logs roll. Let the good times roll, baby. There's your noisemaker. Or just a shiny object, like, ooh, shiny. Oh, only one guard. I thought they were going to go for all three. That's that's like a huge uh, environmental kill right there. I've been seeing a lot more of these games do that too, where they have something that you can tip over like a boulder or something onto everybody. So I do like the environment kills. They feel much more special than just sneaking up behind somebody and, and shooting them or knocking them out. I can see the benefits of this towering weapon. What the hell was that? I think those guys are dead. She laid down some heavy covering fire. Doesn't look like it alerted anybody else on the map. Especially that guy right there. He's, oh, two of them were rather close. Alright, I think they're going to climb up through that cave. Ah, uh, yeah. Only one character can climb, yeah. The more nimble one. So it looks like they're gonna work their way around, maybe get an environment kill here. Oh, another another guard. Man, this is <laughs> this is completely packed with guards. It looks like they're they're tying everybody up, so it does look like some of the knockouts are uh, they're not necessarily stealth kills, but they're they're really just knockouts. So they're going to have to tie them up. So very much like commandos there. I also see a question mark, which implies that this could be like an earlier mission where you're learning a character's abilities or just the game in general. All those guys are blinded. Nice. All right. Well, we're coming to the end of the footage provided from the devs for Stargate Timekeepers. But I, I, I like what I see here, and I certainly want to get into the beta myself and just give it a try. Um, certainly not opposed to seeing new games on old franchises that are rather new because they don't get too much attention. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section for Stargate Timekeepers. And uh, I certainly would like to do a first look on the channel myself and play the game a little bit and uh, likely do a live stream just because there's a lot of content here. So let me know down below. And thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks again for watching.